Hello, everybody. I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, we'll continue the topic about the key, about uh, the FR theories of gravity, and especially we're going to talk about the FR theories of uh, we're going to talk about the conformal transformation. It's a transformation which will uh, bring our action from the modified form or our theory from modified gravity into the form of uh, into the form of Einstein gravity. Of course, this is not free, and there is cost for this one, and we will see what how much this conformal uh, or what the price for this conformal transformation. Before doing that and before uh, starting or start working on this conformal transformation, let me remind you about the references for this lecture and especially for this lecture, the first uh, uh, reference is that this lecture notes and also on FR theories of gravity. And we will cover this uh, section here section six about the conformal transformation. And the second reference is um, the chapter, two sections actually from the book, Cosmology and Scalar Tests of uh, Gravity by Valerino Faraoni. I highly recommend you to review this book. It's talking about the uh, specific types of modified gravity. It's called Scalar Tests of Gravity, and I'm going to talk about it inshallah in the future. But also I highly recommend you to read any paper for uh, Valerino Faraoni because I found that that is one of the best persons who's writing in this field. You know, he, he, within his paper, he covered the physical meaning, the, uh, and you know, that's introduced the different viewpoints of the persons, and most of the times he took the neutral positions. This is my opinion, maybe I don't know if it's correct, but believe me, this is, you, you, will, you will be really interesting when you, write, when you read uh, his papers. From this book today, we will uh, take chapter, yes, chapter from chapter one, uh, section, which section, yeah, section 11, conformal transformation techniques, and 11, one, the conformal transformation. We're not going to talk about the plastic theory or closer line cosmology. This is, this is a different subject. And also from here, effective energy. I'm not going to talk about it in details. I just, I'm just, uh, I, I will just mention uh, you to refer this section and or this chapter. It's about the issue of conformal transformation. That's um, introducing different viewpoints about which frame will be the physical one, the original frame, which called Jordan frame, or the frame after. Uh, doing the conformal transformation, which usually called Einstein. So let's start our lecture for today. And I will start the lecture by quick revision about what we talked about at last lecture. So here, let me write the title. If our theories of gravity. So if our theories of gravity, let's remember that last uh, lecture, we talk about the following, yes, the following, the following points that, okay. The first point that so we started from, we introduced the general relativity starting from the action which contains the Helbert Einstein action plus the action of the matter. And as a result, we covered by taking the variation of this, the metric action, the variation of the metric action with respect to G mu nu, and that's equal zero. And as a result, we conclude uh, Einstein equations, R nu nu minus one over two, G nu nu R equals eight pi G T nu nu, where T nu nu is the uh, momentum energy tensor. Then we said, okay, let's see now what about the FR theories. In case of FR for S metric, we have here S, uh, let's say SF plus SM, and SF here, it's this one contain R, rich scalar, while this one contain FR, function of rich scalar. And also by taking the variation, we covered that modify, but of course it's uh, too long. But the main idea that we found G mu nu equals 
here we have uh, that term over one f prime r and here we have k mu nu and i think we have here k maybe plus here we have t mu nu effective uh, i'm sorry this is t mu nu we should keep the indices balanced so if t mu nu and here we have effective so effective uh, metric tensor and this one uh, generated mainly because of the modified uh, gravity and it's related to the curvature okay also we discussed that we have different formalism for the general relativity the first one is called metric formalism Palatini formalism and fine metric formalism. We have another formalism, of course, but now I'm, I'm just pointing that here we have that uh, R contains gamma, crystal symbols, and this is function of G mu. While here we have R contains gamma, but now gamma is independent of G mu nu. And S of my, my S matter depend only on G mu nu. Fine metric that's R con R contains gamma and G mu nu. They are both of them. They are independent variables. And S of the matter also depend on G mu nu and on gamma. Uh, and I mentioned that's all what we are working on it here. That's only the metric formalism. In the future, when I'm when I will uh, continue because I I have an, an intention to introduce the Balatini formalism and the fine metric uh, formalism, we will back to the theories and see what the difference between different formalisms of the gravity. Also, we talk about the boundary terms, uh, Hawking, uh, Gibbons uh, terms, and uh, we mentioned about it. But today, the main topic is about the conformal transformation. Well, this conformal transformation. The, conform, the main idea of conformal transformation that if we here, let me just check this. This one, yes. Uh, this is about the Valatini formalism here. Valatini formalism, but I said I didn't want to talk about the Valatini formalism. So here, if we look at this here, yeah, this one, this is actually the equation of uh, which we found it about the modified gravity. We can see that here we have some kind of uh, difficult uh, or, or different, let's, say, let's avoid the word difficult, different form of the gravity and different form of the relation between the gravity and the matter because here we have this function it's completely different from einstein equations the idea of the conformal transformation is that's doing and applying a conform uh, transformation of that on the metric tensor and as a result we can bring the action here this action from this form to the action of the einstein helbert action with linearity form this is the main idea of the metric tensor. Of course, this is not a free. Because of this transformation, we will introduce new degrees of freedom, which we can take it as a scalar field. Uh, it's, it's, it's not exactly like this, but like if we have uh, another kind of matter, it's called uh, represented by scalar field. So this is the idea of this one. Now, the, the original frame is called the uh, Jordan frame before applying the transformation. After applying the transformation, we call it that Einstein, Einstein frame. There is a huge discussion about which one of the two frames they are the physical one. Uh, some physicists they say found that it's Einstein, the other found that it's Jordan frame, and there is big discussion about this one. Fortunately, about the application of our of this theory in our field in cosmology or in inflation specific uh, let me rephrase it in different a different way here in this lecture because when i say that fortunately i mean within the frame of my work 
I'm working in mainly in the field of inflation. So when we, when it comes to the inflation and the observables uh, from the inflation, there is no difference between the two frames. So you can use this one or this one, but this is not the case always. For specific uh, cases, actually there is difference. Some businesses so they found that the physical one is Jordan frame. The other found that Einstein frame is the physical one. To read brilliant and excellent, elegant discussion about this point, highly recommend you to go to the spoke, uh, cosmology, scalar tensor gravity, cosmology and scalar tensor gravity by Pharaoni. Uh, this is chapter here, six, three, I think it's a page. Yes, chapter two, issue of conformal frame. Within this one, he will discuss that to see that we have Different viewpoint. The first viewpoint that Jordan and Einstein frame are physically equivalent. The second viewpoint that two frames are inequivalent. The Jordan frame is the physical one, and Einstein frame is unphysical. And the third viewpoint that the two frames are inequivalent. The Jordan frame is unphysical, while the Einstein frame is the physical. One. Of course, there is for each one, for each viewpoint, there is cases, and there is some persons who supported and gave the verification about. Uh, their uh, ascension. So I highly recommend you to read this one, but I'm not going to talk a lot about it because the main hit is not about the conformal transformation itself, but rather it's about the uh, conformal transformation in case of FR theories and how we can bring the FR theories into uh, Einstein gravity. So let's introduce this idea about the conformal transformation And again, in conformal transformation, we'll apply transformation on the metric tensor to bring it from G mu nu into the form G tilde mu nu, where G tilde G mu nu equals omega squared G mu nu. And omega squared is just as function of the coordinates, specific function. It's non-vanishing uh, conformal factor, non-vanishing regular function, or whatever. Okay, now let's see what the benefit of this transformation and how can this transformation affect on our theories. Of course, when you apply the transformation on uh, the metric, on the metric tensor, everything else will be uh, changed because now, for example, if I say that I, I will conf uh, convert G mu nu from G mu to G mu nu del tilde, then also here, that's, and uh, we have as a result that G mu nu equals omega to minus two G mu nu tilde. We need this one because you know the action, for example, contains G mu nu, so I need to replace G mu nu by G mu nu, G mu nu tilde, and that's omega minus two G mu nu. For example, also, the square root of minus g will be converted to the square root of minus g tilde, and that's equal to uh, omega to the power 4, g, uh, the square root of minus g. Or we can say that the square root of minus g tilde equals omega minus 4, the square root of minus g. Ricci scalar also will be changed r, so we can replace it by omega squared to r tilde plus 6 Laplacian ln omega minus 6 g tilde mu nu and here we have nabla mu ln omega nabla mu ln omega it seems that it's difficult to tra the transformation but actually it's so easy and it's direct uh, conclusion you can you can find it that just by, by, by using the relation between the quantity and G mu nu. As you know, that symmetric tensors R will depend on gamma, and gamma will contain and depend on G mu nu and the partial derivative of G, uh, covariant derivative of G mu nu. So easily by replacing G mu nu by G mu nu tilde, you can cover gamma tilde, and then you can recover R tilde, and etc. So it's long calculations. But it's not so difficult to conclude it. Yes. 
I forget that. I, I was afraid that I forget. Uh, I forgot to share the screen, but fortunately, I I share the screen. Okay, so it's it's the direct one. Uh, you can find it in any lecture note. Uh, and, uh, maybe it's difficult to find it in the lecture note because they will mention how you can do this one, and then they will let the work for you. But as I said, it's really easy. It's not difficult. I'm sorry if you heard some noise because you know that um, usually I record the lecture in the morning so everybody will be asleep. But now, because of two, two reasons, I'm recording this uh, lecture uh, in different time. The first one is that's because of I have a lot of work. I couldn't uh, record it uh, until this uh, weekend. And the second reason because now I have a boy. And you know, when you have baby boy, you will never have some <laughs> of quiet time. Always you have some noise and some crying. I'm, I'm pleased and I'm uh, happy for that because of that. But you know, this is the situation. So I'm sorry if you hear some noise within this lecture. Okay, so this is R. Now this is R, which is scalar. And then we can apply this transformation now to see how, how the action will be changed. But also here we should be smart enough to, or we make something smartly, so we can bring the form of the action from the usual one into image type. To, to see how we can do this, let's remember that S of the metric, let me use different color, I use the green, oh, no, that's a blue, that's white. S of the metric equals one over two K the integral of d for x. I'm sorry if I if I made mistakes about this coefficient here. But I don't think that it's a big problem for anyone who's following this one, because sometimes I forget or I wrote something maybe wrongly. Some other references they call it k kappa squared kappa. Uh, so please forgive me if I made any mistake about this coefficient. Now and then we have here the integral d for x for the Lagrangian of the matter and the Lagrangian of matter contains G mu nu and we have upside the other fields, the fields for the other matter. Now what we will do next is that we will add some function here. We will add uh, a term of uh, R, rich scalar, times FR. We will add this term and subtract it at the same time. So we'll add it and subtract it. Now, if we add and subtract this one, let me write now the resultant action as following. So your S of the metric, that will be 1 over uh, 2 kappa. And here we have, uh, let me just wait here, that the integral of the 4x we have the square root of minus g, but now here we have that uh, we add r and subtract r f r, so we have here r f r, and we are one over two kappa squared minus y plus this part. What this y? Why is by definition it will be 1 over 2 kappa? And here we have R F R, that's function which we added, uh, minus F. Because here we have minus, this is minus F R. Okay, then what the benefit again with this one? Now let's see what if we uh, took the transformation. As, as we mentioned above, that g mu nu will be g mu nu will be replaced by omega minus two g mu nu. The square root of minus g will be replaced by this, and r will be re replaced by this. In this case, we will find the following metric: s of the metric after conform the taking the conformal transformation. That will be d for x omega minus four the square root of minus g tilde, that's coming from here, 1 over 2 k squared, we have fr omega minus 2, or 
oh, sorry, omega 2 r tilde omega 2 r tilde y because of this term here and uh, we can put this one between a bucket here and then just write the rest of the end of the terms minus six dot 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 but of course here about y uh, we have here y and y is written with this, with this one omega minus four so now that will be only y here there is nothing change but now we have here omega minus four and here we have omega minus omega squared so we can by entering this one this one here this like this so this will be omega minus two and y will be multiplied by omega minus four and also we cannot forget that this l now will be a function for omega minus two g tilde omega minus two g minus tilde let me write what what i'm talking about it here so conformal transformation so after doing this transformation that g mu nu will goes to omega minus two g mu nu tilde that's we have now the action of the metric as following will be written as following is metric will be the integral of d4 x the square root of minus g tilde and here we have of on over two kappa fr to kappa squared it's just about I, I, I follow the reference omega minus two and here we have r tilde plus six Laplacian lin omega minus six g tilde mu nu uh, lin nabla mu lin omega nabla nu lin omega and here we have let's close the bracket my omega minus four y and of course we have l m and now contains omega minus two g mu nu tilde and here we have the fields of the matter okay now let's see what will happen if we show that omega squared to be fr now if we show omega squared be fr so Omega minus two will be one over fr with fr that will cancel each other, and as a result, now we have that S metric will be we we'll take the form as d four x the square root of minus g tilde and open the bracket. That's here we have over one to kappa squared. Now uh, r tilde plus six. Laplacian ln omega minus six g mu nu tilde nabla mu ln omega nabla nu ln omega minus y over f r or y over f r squared plus here the integral of d four x the Lagrangian of the matter f minus one g tilde mu nu psi now by using ghost theorem because here we have laplacian and we have the integral over d4x we can convert by applying the ghost theorem into uh, d3x and taking the boundary terms we can find that this term equals zero so this term will be cancelled that's going to be zero and then we still have these terms here but now let's make something let's define a scalar field phi we have here a scalar quantity 
within this omega. So if we define that this is scalar field as one over kappa, the square root of three over two, ln fr, and then fr will be the exponential of kappa, the square root of two over three, phi. Now what will happen, how this will be changed the situation? Because now ln omega, ln omega, where omega, remember that omega is square is fr, so omega will be the square root of fr. So it will say ln omega, it means that we have one over two ln from this one, that's one over two ln uh, fr. We have here nabla mu. And from here we have the same thing, that's nabla nu, one over two, nabla nu ln fr. We have one over two and one over two, one over four, so this is will be divided by four. But also, we should be careful that there is this coefficient that's the square root of three over two. So you have already here from, and I'm sorry, now if you want to replace this ln phi by, uh, ln fr by phi, that will be the square root of two over three. So you have the square root, you have square root of 2.3, 2 over 3 from the first one, the square root of 2 over 3 from the second one, so you have 2 over 3. Now you have 6 times 2 over 3 over 4. So 2 times 6 over 3 times 4. Uh, that will be... Uh, so here we have 2 and here we have uh, also 2, so that will be 1. 1. Yeah, that will be one. And also you have kappa with kappa, so you have kappa squared. From here you have kappa squared, yes. But there is one over two, you should have one over two. I think I made a mistake about the calculation maybe. One over two from this, one over two, one over four. But also you have that uh, ln fr two over three. So you have two over three. Yes, two over three. Ah, and already you have one over two here. You have one over two here. So that will be, will be, yes. You know, already you have one over two here. So by doing this, we can see that now uh, uh, this one is given as following. That S of the metric will be the integral of d4x, the square root of minus g tilde, and here we have 1 over 2k squared r tilde squared minus 1 over 2 g tilde mu nu, uh, nabla mu phi, nabla nu phi, minus v phi, where we define the rest of this one as a v5. So now, and, and here we have now this, the integral of this uh, Lm of the matter. Uh, we have now uh, g, g mu nu tilde, and we have f, uh, we have here omega, omega, omega minus two, here we have omega minus two, Omega minus two, it means that's F R to minus one, or or let's say if yes, F R or F phi to minus one, because we look now we replaced uh, F R by phi. So now it seems that we have look now we have this part here. It's Helbert Einstein action as a linear for rich scalar. In addition to this, look here we have, it seems like we have a scalar field. This is the kinetic term, this is the potential for the scalar field. So we introduce a new degrees of freedom. And within the matter now, there is direct coupling between these degrees of freedom and 
the matter itself, introducing by this within the uh, Lagrangian itself. Uh, I hope now, oops. Let me read this because now I'm afraid that you cannot see the equation. So this is this is what I was talking about. Okay. So again, so now we have here like if we have the part of the Herbert Einstein action. We have, in addition to new degrees of freedom, it seems like we have matter with a scalar field and uh, with kinetic term and potential. And here we have non-minimal coupling between this, between the matter and this new degrees of freedom. Okay. Uh, now, now we are dealing with this new uh, new action, like if we have new action. So now after conformal transformation, so here conformal Make mistake because always I remember about the indices up down. Okay, okay, go for our transformation. Now we bring all action to this form. That we have S metric, the one over two k, the integral of t four x the square root of minus g tilde, and we have. One over two, kappa squared, r tilde. We introduce now new term with one over two g mu nu tilde. Nabla mu phi. Nabla mu phi minus v phi plus the integral of d four x l of the matter. We have f minus one phi g tilde mu nu and here we have epsilon that's for the matter okay now what the next step of course the next step we should work on the uh, field equations to find what we have the first one now if we want to look about this one uh, from the viewpoint of okay, that the whole at uh, the whole is metric if we derive it we will find that we have g mu nu because of this one. And then we have t mu nu for the matter. And okay, uh, there is here some connection with t mu nu with phi. So let's call it effective. And we have t mu nu phi. We'll have another scalar tensor. Uh, another uh, tensor for the scalar field phi. And also we need to find the equation of motion for this scalar field because now we have this as a field to introduce this field and we want to find the equation of motion for this field that trains that, that, that the trace as I said that we have the trace of this uh, moment, momentum energy tensor for this scalar field t mu nu phi T mu nu for phi, that's tilde because we are working in the frame of tilde. So as usual, that will be negative, the square root of minus g tilde. And you hear the variation of the square root of minus g tilde, L of phi over delta g mu nu tilde. What is L phi? L phi is one over two minus one over two g mu nu tilde nabla mu phi 
نبلا نيو فاي ماينس في فاي تيكينج بيس ذا فاريشن اوف ال وذ ريسبكت تو جي ميو نيو ذاتس ويل ريبرز ريزلتس فروم هير ذاتس تي ميو نيو فاي We have the first one that says take the variation of L phi. So you have uh, the square root of minus G with the square root of minus G. So you have negative two. And uh, the variation of L phi with respect to G mu nu, we have the first term. So you have here minus one over two, nabla mu phi, nabla nu phi. And we have delta chronic curve. Because uh, just to avoid the confusion, let's call this one as here alpha beta and here alpha beta because no one say that they should be the same they are dummy indices so the variation of g mu nu with respect to this one that will give us uh, delta kronecker alpha beta mu nu and that's what for that the indices here will be mu nu like this so as a result we have negative two minus o oh, and here we have uh, negative one over two so The results will be only nabla mu phi, nabla nu phi. And here where they have nothing. But then we have that uh, the, square, the variation of the square root of minus g. So we have negative 2 over the square root of minus g. And let's remember that the variation of the square root here, the variation of square root of minus g with respect to g mu nu tilde, tilde, that will be negative. Uh, negative 1 over 2 the square root of minus g tilde and g mu nu tilde yes g mu nu tilde then we have here negative 1 over 2 over the square root of minus g tilde And we have the variation of this one, that will be 1 over 2, the square root of minus g tilde, g mu nu tilde. And we have the Lagrangian, because the variation of this one multiplied by the Lagrangian, the Lagrangian, we have the Lagrangian here, which is nabla mu, the same here, L5. And as a result, we have now t tilde mu nu phi, nabla mu phi, Nabla nu phi plus or minus uh, minus g mu nu tilde multiplied by uh, negative here. Ah, but if we, uh, I'm sorry, I forget here the minus. So minus with minus that will be positive. So here positive. And then we have these, both sides, they contain negative. So let's put the negative out of bracket. Then here we have 1 over 2, g mu nu, or j, g alpha beta, nabla alpha phi, nabla beta phi. It's dummy indices, even if I call them uh, mu nu, no problem. But just to, to avoid any confusion, let's call it with another, give them another indices, minus phi phi. So this is the... Uh, momentum in energy tensor for the scalar field phi in Einstein frame, <coughs> not in Jordan frame. In Einstein frame, after applying the conformal transformation. So this one. <coughs> okay. Uh, now let's look at the equation of motion for this scalar field. So conformal transformation. Again, let's remember what the metric, what Einstein metric tensor, it's uh, square root of g, square root of minus g tilde, 1 over 2 kappa square r tilde, minus 1 over 2 g mu nu, Nabla mu phi, nabla mu phi, minus v phi, and uh, here we have plus sm uh, for the matter, s of the matter. Okay.
Now to take this, the, the variation of, or the equation of motion, we'll apply the euler lagrange equation. So we will take uh, the variation of here, this the square root of minus g tilde L phi over d, d mu phi plus here, the square root of minus g tilde L phi over uh, phi d phi. Of course, what this one? It's it's all our Lagrange equation. We want to take this uh, the variation of the part which contains or uh, the part uh, with the variation with respect to to the scalar field. Part. Find the equation function for the scalar field. Now the first one doesn't contain any scalar field, so there is no nothing for this. But second term contains uh, which this one, if we call this one as L phi, and don't forget that here from this we have the square root of minus g tilde. This term contains the covariant derivatives that are just here. Let's covariant derivatives with respect to uh, the scalar field. So we took this one as uh, Euler Lagrange. No need to talk a lot about it. It's Euler Lagrange, the non Euler Lagrange. But also, don't forget that now this S matter or L matter contains also, because here if we take that integral d for x of Lm, contains also the non minimal coupling between the scalar field and the matter. So we should take also the variation of Lm with respect to phi because it doesn't contain the derivatives of the scalar field phi. So only this term we should take. Now let's look at the first term. The variation with respect to nabla mu from here, you have nabla mu, nabla nu, so that will be nabla mu, nabla nu, and you know the derivative of the first one multiplied by the second one, plus the derivative of the second one by, by the, uh, multiplied by the first one. And so you have two, and then we have my, uh, one over two, so that will be cancelled. Uh, we have minus and minus. Uh, then we have here, well, and we, we have here nabla in addition to that, so we have Laplacian. That will give us the uh, Laplacian. So the first one will give us Laplacian for phi. Now this one, the first term doesn't contain uh, the variation with respect to phi, but this one contains with respect to phi. So we have uh, d v phi with respect to phi. And we still have here, of course, dlm over d phi and that's equal to zero. We check that's for sign and sign. Yes, and we should not forget that all are working in the um, tilde frame, so all of this we should put tilde. So we have here Laplacian phi minus dv phi with respect to phi plus 1 over the square root of minus g because here we have uh, the square root of minus g tilde the square root of minus g tilde so uh, if we divide it by now by the square root of minus g tilde here we have 1 over minus g tilde and this the derivative of lm with respect to phi okay. so that will be like if we have uh, Find Gordon equation for the scalar field. But now we have this term which represents the variation of the matric of the matter with respect to this uh, to this scalar field. Now if we look about this term a little bit more about the last term, uh, because this term now. This term, if we want to write it in terms of uh, g mu nu tilde, in terms of Einstein tilde, so this, let's focus on this one here, Lm with respect to phi, and let's write it as the variation of Lm with respect to g mu nu and the variation of g mu nu with respect to phi. Okay, then what we have here is the square root of minus g over 2, and then we have negative 2, the variation of Lm 
with respect to gene your new. What I'm trying to say to do here to write it as a team your new of gene your new with respect to that. And that will be written as this negative the square root of minus g over 2 team your new of the matter. And here we have the derivative gene your new with respect to phi. And we can write it now in terms of T mu nu in, in terms of um, tilde frame or Einstein frame R, the square root of minus G tilde. And uh, then we have 1 over 2 FR. Why this? Because of the conformal transformation. Remember that we have omega minus 2 and omega minus 2. Uh, that will be omega, omega square is FR, so omega minus 2 will be 1 over FR. And here we have D FR over phi and here we have g mu nu tilde t mu nu matter tilde so again here we use that's the square root the square root of minus g tilde this is f square r the square root of minus g so the square root of minus g would be the inverse case and the g mu nu equals f r g mu nu tilde about this term here because now we have this derivative and t mu nu tilde t mu nu tilde for the matter is negative 2 over the square root of minus g tilde the variation of l m with respect to g mu nu which is actually negative 2 over f r squared the square root of minus g tilde and here we have the variation of l m over uh, f minus 1 r delta g mu nu tilde and this is t mu nu m over f r okay now if we define these terms here as 1 over r d f r over d phi as uh, with with 2k as as strength of coupling between the field and the matter so this one if we divide it as here we have the square root of minus g and this one we divide it we define it as kappa q as q and here we have t tilde mu nu then the klein coordinate equation for the scalar field can be written now as Laplacian of phi minus the variation of dv phi over d phi plus kappa q t tilde. And this is for the matter. So now this is the klein coordinate equation for the scalar field. Now, in this lecture, actually, uh, I introduce the idea of that conformal transformation. Now, I know that the question will be, what are the benefit of this one? What the difference if we have used this equation, this, uh, uh, the, the, equa the equations in this frame or in another frame? That actually will be so clear when we, after doing or after applying the FR modified theories of gravity to the case of into the case of uh, the scale and uh, the cosmology because until now we are just building the mathematical structure of this theory without looking at their application or at its applications but next lecture we will review the uh, the cosmology and how we can deal with the cosmology from the uh, theory of the gravity under study we'll still review the cosmology and Friedman equations according to the Einstein gravity, then we will go to the, these equations and the cosmological observations according to our theories of gravity. And then we can see what's the difference between Einstein frame, Jordan frame, or the benefit of these conformal transformations. So we need to be patient because, again, this lecture, it's not about, you know, that's public or uh, public lectures for just giving an idea about the FR theories. No, the, the, the idea behind this lecture is just talking about the FR theories in details. 
So I'm starting by the mathematical or building the mathematical structure of this lecture of these uh, theories. After that, we will look at the applications. We will review some papers about how we can deal and how the, the physicists to these theories and conclude the observa observables in the universe and study the universe and examine the validity, the validity of, this, uh, of these theories. But as everything, anything you should do, you should start step by step. Thank you for your listening. I hope that these lectures was uh, helpful, useful, and interesting. Uh, most welcome if you most welcome if you have any questions or any kind of communication. Actually, this is one of the goals uh, behind this this series of lecture. That you know creates some uh, kind of scientific discussion about some kind of advanced topic like these topics. Thank you again. Have a nice day and see you next time.